Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 14th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2023. We are in, living in interesting times and sad times. I am uh, very distressed by what I've seen going on in Gaza. Um, I am appalled by what I see. I, I really don't have words, and whatever words I could find would not be suitable for this particular platform, or probably for a Christian anyway. Uh, very difficult to uh, to uh, keep emotions in check, to try to keep uh, my attitude godly, consistent with his purposes and his will, rather than responding out of the flesh and uh, with the desires to uh, consign them all to the flames of eternity. Uh, but not the residents of Gaza, but the aggressors. Christians, uh, those who are born again, we have a, a natural impulse toward justice, but it's tempered by mercy. And we also see, seek to see things from God's perspective. And we can see things from God's perspective because the scripture says that we, those who are born again, have the mind of Christ. So you have to, but you have to, uh, trust in him and look to him for the understanding and how to walk in such a way is consistent with the will of God, not simply reacting emotionally to things, which is what most of the world does. Now, what's, so, uh, what's happening in the world today is, uh, well, it's like a mega event, like a mega quake. We have an, uh, the confluence of, of a number of streams. One is the uh, the ending, the death of the very short-lived monopolar world. You know, it's uh, the, which is really the America, the United States being the inheritor of the British Empire, with some others thrown in there. But yes, uh, so for that short period of time between uh, 1991 and today, the United States uh, grasped at uh, the heights and uh, ascended like Icarus too close to the sun and well, its wings got melted. And so it's falling. The arrogance of America is its downfall. Uh, American exceptionalism, American, uh, the, the religion of America is Americanism. It is not Christianity. This has never been a Christian nation. It has never officially acknowledged Jesus Christ at all. Uh, it is not Christian. It is uh, a place where some Christians live. I'm beginning to doubt there's a whole lot of us. I, I see uh, that these events that are unfolding, especially now in Gaza, are a touchstone. In other words, they're a, a litmus test. They're, they're the determiner about where people stand. And apparently an awful lot of people are standing with those who are committing genocide. And I find that very distressing. Christians... Uh, born-again biblical Christians, or, or those who claim to be, uh, have this knee-jerk reaction to support Israel, and there's no good reason for that. It's simply a product of two things. One is the fact that Christians who are raised going to church go to Sunday school and you color pictures of, of, of Adam and Eve and Noah and his ark, and, you know, Sunday school is often a box of crayons and some handouts, and David and Goliath and uh, Moses and the, uh, sea, uh, the sea, taking Israel through the sea, and just a very superficial, banal uh, view. And so we, are, we, we sort of have the idea that the Jews are just Christians— uh, are just like Christians, they just were early ones. 
No, that's not even a even a beginning of an accurate presentation of the Old Testament, and that's one of the problems. Uh, things like Sunday school are designed to keep kids busy rather than teach them the truth so the parents can go upstairs and do whatever they do, uh, which is generally not what they ought to be doing. <laughs> But nevertheless, so we have, we're raised with this as I was raised in a moderate Lutheran denomination. Uh, we didn't even talk about Christians. We were Lutherans, <laughs> which is in, in retrospect that, yeah, that makes sense. I was not a Christian until God got a hold of me and revealed Christ to me and that made me a Christian. God made me a Christian. No one else. I didn't do it. Uh, the denomination didn't do it. A preacher didn't do it. God did it. And I think that is true all the time. It is. We are his handiwork, his creation. Uh, it's not something man can do. And that's why one of the reasons why state religion is an oxymoronic thing, a state Christianity, because real Christianity requires the power of God, and state Christianity Christianity does not have the power of God, so it substitutes what man can do. Man's uh, uh, it substitutes uh, sacraments, uh, ceremonies, uh, stagecraft, and psychology, uh, edifices, grand edifices, uh, priests that have no existence in the New Testament. Uh, not not like they not like these at least with their robes and ceremonies and rituals, which are really a throwback to the Old Testament temple, uh, or paganism. You can pick either one there. And that's it, it's, it's just what man can do. It is not is so many like uh, Billy Graham's crusades. It's not based on the power of God. It's based on people making a decision and, and using te techniques, man-made and techniques of, of manipulation of uh, crowd dynamics and psychology and sociology to influence people to make a decision that doesn't actually accomplish anything because your salvation doesn't come from you and your decision. It comes from Christ and God. Salvation is of the Lord. It is not of man, which the Scripture is extremely clear about. You're not born of man. You're born of God. It is the work of the Holy Spirit, not the work of men. So, which, which is why state religion is what it is. Why Roman Catholicism is what it is, because it is, uh, it is, an imitation of Christianity built by man, rather than the house of God, real Christianity, real Christians that are built by God. That's the difference, and there's not nearly as many of us as there are of them which is why the world sees something that's false, which is exactly like what Satan wants. It, he wants you to think that Christianity is what you see in Rome, for example, and it's not. It's not that at all. That is the, in fact, that is anti-Christianity in Rome. The uh, Pope is an antichrist, an antichrist, not the antichrist, and there are many of them, many of them. Contrary to the mythology created by certain elements of conservative Christianity, also known as dispensationalism, which comes from a man named John Darby, uh, who invented it in the first part of the 19th century. Hardly part of the faith delivered once for all unto the saints, which ends with the apostles. There is no new revelation, which is evident that Muhammad was not of God because the faith was delivered once for all unto the saints in the first century by Jesus and the apostles. His apostles were chosen by him to reveal the faith. He inspired and moved by his spirit to do so. All right, so uh, anyway, we have this mega quake going on uh, that is uh, shaking the entire world. Not literally a mega quake, that might happen too, but uh, this is something that is uh, a, a major change in this world order. We see the the short-lived uh, American hegemony 
uh, collapsing now. Uh, America impaled itself on its own sword uh, in Ukraine and with the sanctions. <laughs> I, God has a sense of irony, doesn't he? And this was prophesied in the Psalms, by the way, that the evildoers, they will impale themselves on their own weapons. <laughs> the word, the, Jesus said the word of God cannot be broken, and so it is. So you have the United States impaling itself uh, and the Ukrainian people in the process on not the Soviet, or not the Russians' and weapons, but America's own weapons. The American sanctions have impaled America and given rise to a very much reinvigorated, ascendant Russia. Oh, would, the, would that we had Putin in the United States. <laughs> you know, given a choice between Putin, on their track record, Putin, Trump, and Biden, I think Putin would win in a landslide if people really saw what he's done. He will go down as perhaps, if not the greatest, then at least one of the greatest rulers of Russia, leaders of Russia, because a leader is probably a better term, because he's not an absolute dictator uh, at all. It's, there's a, it's a uh, federal system, and he's, there's not just Putin there. And as though... Democracy exists there, real democracy. They just keep reelecting them for good reason. Good reason. Unlike the United States, where it's rigged in all kinds of ways, it's, Putin is our Russia is much more free and open than we are. Uh, they they experienced their seventy years of communism and they're turned aside, although there still is a communist party. That's how free it is. There's still a real, legitimate communist party in Russia. Uh, there's not a two-party state like here, which is a travesty. The, it's really a one-party state that pretends to be two parties to keep it that way. They exclude everything else for all intents and purposes, if not legally, but practically. Of course, they control the well, anyway, they uh, the the American attempt to use Ukraine as a uh, uh, proxy force to destroy Russia or reduce Russia to subservience again, where it was under Yeltsin. Again, Putin came in and he throttled the uh, the the kleptocrats and the the oligarchs, and it was necessary to do it. And he, he did it. And in a situation like that, you can't always do things uh, in a strictly so-called American legal way. No, at times America doesn't do things that way either. No, there are times when you see the, the, you have internal enemies that are destroying your people and enslaving them, and you need to eliminate them if they do not, do not go peaceably then you have to use the power of the sword that God has given you to punish the wicked and reward the good, which is a legitimate purpose of government, to punish the wicked and to reward the good. So, uh, American sanctions. Oh, yeah, this has been so amusing to watch. Uh, but sad, but amusing. Um, and I'm a resident of the United States, so I might get struck by the fallout of this. God protects his people. Uh, America needs to have been taken down a couple pegs, definitely. But I don't know. It's, it's, it's all a house of cards now, quite literally. Nothing but a house of cards. It's all hollowed out. Uh, the money is worthless. It's just not even a fiat currency, hardly. Uh, it's, it's finished. America is, the path America is on, I know where it ends. It doesn't end well. And there's no off ramps. None that are none that the people in power are willing to take. So well uh, if what I think is true, 
a little bit of spec biblical speculation, uh, the West is the United States and its proxies, which are, or lapdogs, or or dependencies, or vassal states, or whatever you want to call them, in Western Europe, NATO, all these things uh, ends, or at least part of it, the center ends in one hour. Uh, in fire. Babylon the Great. <laughs> Which is historically and deeply connected to Rome, including Roman Catholicism. Uh, dressed in purple and scarlet with a golden cup in its hand. This is not the largest Roman Catholic uh, country in the world, but it is of Europe. It is of England, which was Roman Catholic. And the King of England is just a, you know, the Protestants are simply daughters of Rome. State religion, just like Roman Catholicism began as. And uh, 25, uh, Roman Catholicism is the largest religious denomination in the United States. So if you talk about the United States as Christian, what you're really saying is the United States is Roman Catholic. It's not the majority of people that call themselves Christians, but the number of people that are actually Christians is born again Christians is probably less than 5%. <laughs> so, so we're a tiny fraction here. I mean, people that actually try to seek to live as Christians and believe in Jesus Christ, and believe the testimony of the Scriptures, have been born again. The Spirit of God dwells in us. We're a tiny fraction. How do you know? You look at the evidence. Look at the evidence. There's people that do polls on this. and You know, you, when, you, when you have people that call themselves Christians and, and think that Jesus sinned, well, they're not Christians. <laughs> They don't know the basics of Christianity at all, let alone the reality of it. You know, when you're born again, too, God puts a love for his word in you. So the first thing you start doing is devouring the Bible. Literally, you spend hours reading it. It's just part of it, I think. Or at least that was in my case. Maybe I shouldn't project that on everybody, but um, I know that was true in the case of a lot of people around me. And I didn't come to faith in a church. I came to faith in a kneeling next to a bunk in a military dorm in Minot, North Dakota, alone in the room, except the Holy Spirit came in, and that was it. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a long precursor to that, but deep in sin, and God saved this sinful human being. God sent his son into the world to save sinners, like me. If you're not a sinner, you don't need him. <laughs> you think you don't need him because you are a sinner. But God changes our hearts so we don't love sin. Doesn't mean we don't do it now and then, but we've got habits that still hang with us, and sometimes we're weak in the flesh. We're still dwelling these these bodies in which sin dwells. Still, the bodies, are, bodies haven't been redeemed yet. They're still bodies that come from Adam, the original sinner. So anyway, uh, the United States has impaled itself on its own sword with the sanctions. Oh, God's justice is just so wonderful. I just, ooh, yeah, they deserve it, Lord. But that's not the end of it. So we have the Ukraine thing, which is winding down now because the only problem was all the dead Ukrainians, and I think the, I think uh, the Russians and, and President Putin regret that, but they weren't the ones in control. There was Ukraine very shortly after the beginning of the special military operation, which was a fairly small number of troops, and they, they moved close to Kiev immediately, and uh, Zelensky and Ukraine was ready to sign a, a deal. Russians just wanted neutrality. 
They they wanted to a you know a reasonable cut them back to a reasonable military, uh, stop the, uh, the 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 attacks and murder of the ethnic Russians in the east, and uh, Don the Donbas, and of course before that Russia had seized uh, back to its own possession. Uh, uh, Crimea with good cause because the United States had its dirty, lustful fingers chasing after Crimea. Uh, it had been become, uh, had it come under Ukraine during the Khrushchev regime, Khrushchev, uh, uh, a historical accident. It was part of Russia since the 1700s. And their naval base on the Black Sea, and the United States wanted that, and wanted to deprive the Russians of a naval base there, uh, a warm water port. See, they're just out to get Russia, even though it's not communist anymore. They don't care. They just hate Russia because Russia's better than they are. <laughs> it's more moral than they are. You know that, that's why. Why did Cain kill Abel? That's what's going on between the United States and Russia. The United States is Cain. The United States is Cain. However, they dropped the rock on themselves. With the, with the sanctions, they began the disintegration of the American hegemony and the destruction of the American dollar. It's forcing countries like Russia to, since they cut off, Russia would have had to depend on itself and find new friends. So it turned east to China. And the, the, uh, the moronic American administration, of course, was determined to try to wage war and is currently engaged in a sanction war on China. And the same effect is happening there. Rather than stifling uh, Chinese technology, they are simply energizing technology, their China, uh, technology. China is not a race of, of, of coolies. They're brilliant, intelligent people, and they show it. Now, now China's come out with uh, what on there? So the United States forbid them to uh, import some American technology, so now they have invented it invented a microprocessor technology that it does not use the uh, the uh, uh, the ultraviolet pho pho uh, photographic chip lithography system that's been around forever. And instead, they they're using a not and silicon based. See, it's it's really a photographic process. It's a chemical that's like a, a film emulsion, a chemical photosensitive emulsion. And then they put a mask on that, and they like a negative, and they expose it. And it hardens some of the material, and the others they wash away, and then they etch it chemically. Which very, It's a photographic process. The old f film process, really, is what it is. Uh, or the same kind of stuff that used in uh, uh, making masks for uh, silk screens. It's that kind of chemical, basically, uh, that is used for that. The old circuit board technology was photographic. So this microchips is just refi refinement of that. Uh, you create layers of etched, doped silicon, eh, okay, which is a semiconductor. Germanium is a semiconductor. The first transistors, I believe, were germanium, and then they went to silicon. The Chinese have gone to the other very common semiconductor, Carbon. So they came out with a five nanometer carbon chip that does not use lithographic processes at all. I don't know what they did. I don't really care. I'm not that interested in that kind of stuff anymore. But the uh, United States doesn't have anything like it. Just like Russia has weapons that are unlike anything the United States has. And the United States has been unable to, ex to produce a hypersonic usable weapon. Huh. The Russians have always been good. I mean, they're they, they made under under the, the communists. They made a, a great leap forward, really, uh, to borrow the phrase from the from Mao Zedong, which was not a, a nice guy. And Stalin was certainly not a nice guy, but 
the, the Russian people uh, are, you know, <laughs> they're not backwards. I mean, they're the Russian, uh, given the, the levels of technology they had, they definitely moved forward, the aircraft, everything else, and now they're, they're way ahead of the United States uh, government programs in space, in aircraft, in missile technology especially. Aircraft are going the way of the dinosaur, really. Uh, manned aircraft for military use is like, why? But it's going in a bad direction of AI, which is going to be the new god. It already is for many people. That's not going to end well. We know how it ends. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation. But uh, so the United States sanctions impale the United States and, and breathed new life and dynamic. Uh, I can't say it. A new, <laughs> new dynamic. You know, these words you don't use very often. World, a uh, new dynamic into Russia, a new life into Russia. And Russia had to become self-sufficient and look for new alliances, new sources. And what makes, what, where does the United States get everything nowadays? Where's everything that the United States has? Where is it made? Other than like Abram, Abrams tank chassis or something. China, because America moved all its technology to China. Now the Chinese have, because the United States, Biden started putting sanctions on them, Chinese said, well, we've got to develop our own China technology just like Russia. And, of course, Russia and China is like, yeah, we'll share, we'll share. So uh, I'm sure the Chinese will share their 5 nanometer carbon-based technology with Russia. Russia will say, uh, has already furnished China with S-400 missile systems, anti-aircraft surface-to-air missile, defensive missile systems. Uh, and I'm sure they'll share a lot of other things because they've got a common en enemy. That it's it may be in serious decline, but it's it's dangerous because of that. A uh, it's like a, a bear that's no longer able to uh, to hunt naturally. It'll start hunting easier sources of food, like human beings or human. A garbage, and that brings problems, and that's where the United States is now. It's a, it's an eagle is dying of old age, but uh, it's still dangerous, and even more dangerous because it's become corrupt, and senile. You don't know what it's just unpredictable. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of Americans that won't like this, but um, it's reality. It's nothing but reality. Just open your eyes. Look for yourself. You just don't want to hear it because your uh, comfortable life is going to disappear. It is. It's going to get difficult. The American dollar is dying. You know, America has made itself, as the Bible talks about Babylon in the Old Testament, how long will you make yourself rich with loans? United States is Babylon. It's what it is. Babylon the Great, United States and its empire. And it's coming down and eventually it will be burned with fire. As the Bible says so. And it all has its roots in Western corrupted Christianity. Except it has as ancient Israel did, has turned from her husband to the kings of the world, to worship the gods of this world, to worship materialism. See, the United States in its birth was corrupt. It was always a materialistic, godless nation. It rejected the authority of Christ, never submitted itself to Christ in any official way, but always used religion, used Christianity for godless purposes, to control American people. It pretends to be what it's not. It's deceit deceitful. It promises what it does not deliver. 
The goal is not two chickens in every pot and a car in the garage. That is not. The American dream will take you to hell because God has no place in it. Materialism is uniformly condemned by the scriptures, by Christ. A man could not serve God and mammon. So that's where the United States is. We're watching the American empire disintegrate by its own hand. Oh, how sweet it is. Yes, I'm not going to like the consequences living here, but there, there is God and his justice. Mm, yes. America has taken the lives of millions and millions and millions of people unjustly uh, in pursuit of its, its global uh, imperial schemes, and now it will pay the price. And the wages of sin is death. So, anyway, while this is going on, this is just the first rumble in this mega quake, mega event. Now you have Israel, which is somehow somehow fastened as a outgrowth of the United States, almost a bo born of a Western ideology, illegitimate child of Judaism, and Judaism is an illegitimate child of Moses those who rejected the Messiah. So you've got the, the uh, atheistic Jewish uh, Zionists cr trying to create an identity for themselves because what is a Jew without God is, is nothing. So in order to, to establish an identity, they, oh, er, and the popularity of nationalism at that time, oh, let's make a Jewish state. And it has to be in Zion because we have to have an historic connection to the the historic claim to be Jews, uh, since we're not really Jews at all because we don't believe in God. <laughs> huh. Sort of a strange change, chain of events there. So you have the birth of uh, uh, secular Zionism, and uh, coming out of that, coming out of World War II, uh, well, before the war it started, but the real impetus came uh, uh, with... Uh, the uh, the Holocaust in World War II and the mass emigration um, to Palestine. It had been going on pretty strongly before that. With the promise, the deluded promise of a, a, a nation for the Jewish people. Well, the Jewish a Jewish nation without God is worthless. Worthless. Nationalism is a pipe dream. It is, has no value to it. Uh, living in peace under God is the only thing to do. A relationship with God, ha coming into a true relationship with God, knowing God is the whole purpose of living. Without that, you have nothing. Nothing at all but emptiness. Materialism is nothing but emptiness. As anyone that has lived any time should have realized long ago that it is nothing but an empty promise. It cannot bring happiness that endures. Once you you, you can dis, you, you you can pursue something that you think will make you happy, but as soon as you get it, you find out it doesn't make you happy at all, which is the experience of everybody over and over again, at least everybody that has any sense. If you find out you're you're satisfied with material things, well, then you're a dead, empty soul anyway. Uh, you don't have any any uh, anything of substance in you. Because what can be satisfied with the, what is material is just a material thing. Like animals, they can be satisfied by that stuff. But human beings can't because we're made to be the image of God. Without that relationship, you've got nothing. You're an empty person without God. That's a fact. It's a fact. And it explains what why the world is the way it is. But so you've got Israel, this Zionist entity, trying to establish an identity without God. Uh, and they play the, the guilt card, the product of the Holocaust, the guilt card. That's how they've always gotten their way in this world. And every time something comes up, 
you know, like they, they forcibly dispel the Palestinians in the past, which the, the Palestinians call the Nakba, uh, which I didn't know much about, but now I do. See, this whole thing starting on the 7th has caused me to do a little education of myself. And my perspectives have become solidified and definitely not uh, um, at all, although I already was there, uh, uh, definitely become hardened against uh, the Zionist state. I already had seen some things in person that burst the dispensationalist delusion uh, that Israel is a God's people at all. It is not. Only, and you look at the Bible, that's the scriptures say, it is those who are of the faith of Abraham that are the children of Abraham, not those who are of the flesh of Abraham. Even that, it was so deluded by now that it means nothing. Never did mean anything. Never. It's a relationship with God that counts, and that alone. Not your relationship, not your DNA. What is that? Just DNA, that's all it is. It's nothing to do, that has to do with your body, not your spirit, not your soul. Not God. DNA has nothing to do with God. That's just coding for your body. All right, so... Israel now, currently, in their madness, see, God, there, there's a saying, it's not a Christian saying, but it has a certain ring of truth. Whom the gods would destroy, they first drive mad. Of course, that's not a Christian saying, but like, eh. Yeah, uh, the United States gone mad. It's insane. We've got a we've got a totally irrational uh, government that that does not function properly, does not think properly. The biblical explanation is given in Romans chapter one, where people that that refuse to even retain the knowledge of God in their mind, the even basic knowledge that that He exists, God gives them over to a ra irrational mind, to a form of insanity. Yeah, that's that's God's. God's uh, wrath at this present time is revealed both in giving people uh, who refuse to, to acknowledge him and be thankful, gives them over to depraved uh, passions and to an irrational, non-functional mind. That's the end of it. And that's what we see in Washington, for example. The neocons are all insane, moral insanity. Murderers. Murderers without a cause. What was that? Wasn't that spoken of James Dean? Rebel without a cause? Yeah, that's what they are. Rebels against God. Haters of God. That's part of that moral insanity that's spoken of in the ending of Romans chapter 1. Moral insanity, haters of God, filled with all kinds of wickedness. And that's what we see. That's what we see in the White House, in the Congress, in the Senate, in the courts, in America, in American society, in American business. It's permeated all through the system. Because America is godless, uh, it's not. They're not following Christ. To be without Christ is to be without God. He that does not have the Son does not have the Father either. The Scriptures affirm. If you don't belong to Christ, you don't belong to God. That applies to Israel also. They are not ex an exception to that. They rejected their Messiah and continue in that rejection. God is, his arms are open anytime they will repent of that rejection and come back to Christ. Certainly not become Roman Catholics or some abominable thing like that. Come to him. He will welcome them. 
but they refuse. And now they have impaled themselves on their swords, their American-supplied swords. They have revealed, they have canceled the card they've been playing for over 75 years of the Holocaust. You owe us because this is what you did to us. Well, they weren't the only ones that perished in those camps at all. They were about half of those who perished. I believe. I don't know if that even counts uh, all the, the Russians, all the prisoners of war that died in camps. Uh, the Russians were the, or the Soviets were the ones that paid the, the real price for World War II, the end of World War II and their blood. Terrible quantities of people died there. The West was no, uh, the war in the West was nothing compared to that. And they're the ones that truly won. They would have won without America anyway. Russia, you know, invade Russia, and you're done. <laughs> it's just historically, it doesn't work. Yeah. The Russians simply, like the Vietnamese, why did the Vietnamese win? They simply would not surrender. Why, do, why has America been defeated over and over and over again? Because it's fought people that were not willing to surrender. They were not willing to give up the struggle. Like the Palestinians, they're simply not willing to give up. Which is why Israel is trying to eliminate them physically. To destroy the whole population. That's their end game. Hamas is simply an excuse to enable the genocide that they really want to do. That's really their plan. That's the plan of these radicals, is to eliminate the Palestinians, whether it's by pushing them into the Sinai Desert or uh, physically eliminating them, which is what they're doing. They're not going after Hamas. Hamas is underground. They're not. Hamas is just the excuse to enable the genocide, to cover the genocide. But it's not working. The whole world sees what they're doing. They know this is genocide. So Israel has canceled their Holocaust card because they're committing a Holocaust. They're committing genocide. Uh, so all the, the, uh, uh, the, the goodwill they had because they were victims of the Germans in World War II and that ideology, they have simply duplicated that ideology of a victim, uh, Hitler, the the, the uh, National Socialist ideology was founded on two things. If you read Mein Kampf, their victimhood as a result of World War One, and their racial superiority. Victimhood superiority. Victimhood superiority. You find the same ideology in the Talmud. Victimhood, superiority. You distill it down. The details are unimportant, but that's, it seems to repeat everywhere. Victimhood and superiority. And that produces a people who are willing to commit genocide, that have no empathy. It's sort of a, a, uh, a sociopath nation, a psychopathic people that is unable to empathize with their victims, unwilling to empathize with their victims. And so Israel has impaled themselves on their own deeds. They have canceled that global guilt for allowing things to happen to them in World War II by committing the same deeds on others. And so the, the great injustice of the Nakba remains, and uh, Israel can't eliminate that. They've got blood on their hands, and ever-increasing amounts of blood, and they've got nothing to wash their hands with because they rejected the only sacrifice for sins. If Israel were to repent now and turn to Christ, 
God could forgive them and heal them. But the Zionist project has no place because it's based on a false ideology. It's not based on a Jewish identity in God, in Christ, because Jews, apart from the Messiah, are nothing. They do not have a proper identity, just like all people, apart from Christ, are nothing because we were created to be the temples of God, created to be the image of God, and that only can be fulfilled in Jesus Christ. That's why Islam is a dead-end religion. Judaism is a dead-end religion because it cannot bring you to Christ. And without Christ in you, you can't be what you were created to be. The power of God is only in Christianity, in real Christianity, and that's a personal issue between you and God. God must do this work in you. Man can't do it. So that's where we are. We're seeing that the, the shaking of civilizations, uh, the rise, the, the change in the world where you've got the death of the, or the, the rat, or the, let's say, not exactly an immediate death, but it's the the hegemon, the global hegemon, is dying of old age and sickness. Apparently he succumbed to, uh, he wasn't wearing this mask or something. Uh, succumbing to uh, old age, really, has become uh, senile and geriatric, and Biden's really a pretty good uh, uh, archetype of the United States at this stage, our image of the United States. Uh, the United States as a whole is where Biden is. Um, a man that's uh, uh, is corrupt and uh, living a life with no real meaning and lover of money, just, just dead, a dead soul with no life, no life of God in the man. And that's a terrible fate. That's a terrible thing. But that's where humanity is if you don't come to Christ. Materialism, whether it's communist or capitalist, is a, is a wicked, dead system that cannot bring life to anything. The love of material things is not what human beings exist for. We can only find our fulfillment and our reason to be in God. And everything else is a dead end. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It's only present in him. Eternal life is only present in him. Forgiveness of sins is only present in him. Wisdom only exists in him. Because he is God. And he is the door to God, the gate of God, the way of God, way to God, and what we're supposed to be. Judaism can't do that because it's, it just points to him. Islam can't do that. It has no power to save. It has no real knowledge of God in it other than there's only one God. That's about the only thing that's really correct in Islam. It can't bring you to God. God in Islam is not something that you can come to. Salvation in Islam, in Islam is just materialistic pleasure. Now, somebody could spin that in some way, but it's hardly. Really? That's all there is? Living in paradise? That's the end? The end is to know God personally, to be in union with God, to bear his image. And that's all in Jesus Christ and him alone, because he and he alone is the mediator between God and man, the one who stands between us being both God and man. Okay, so 
where 50 minutes okay that's that is more than enough but it's we have this this shaking going on these momentous changes in the world uh, again the 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 very short lived american global empire is is um, on its deathbed and is being replaced by a multipolar system at least we don't know how this is all going to shake out and how soon it's going to shake out but and how it's all going to align but Israel, and of course Israel is uh, like a um, an outgrowth from the hip of the United States for some reason. That's just the way it is. Well, half the population, yeah, we're, it's grafted onto the United States because half the Jewish population lives in the United States of the world. And whether more are in the United States than are in Israel is depends how you count them. Uh, there's a few scattered here and there, other 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 places, but Basically, you got 50% of the Jews in the United States and 50% in Israel. And that, that bonding there is, uh, that might break. That might break under this. The, do the Jews, well, the, the Jews, see, this. people have to take sides. People have to take sides in this. Are you for genocide or not? Do you support people that, in countries that commit genocide or not? In the United States, the Jewish community has to decide are they going to continue to support a genocidal regime in Israel that has been uh, and a Zionist project that has been uh, engaged in ethnic cleansing for 75 years and now is engaged in overt genocide, who does not want peace with the Palestinians, but wants the Palestinians out of the land and to establish a Judenstaat? Uh, it, it, it is a national identity what you want or do you want a relationship with God and to live at peace with other people you want peace or your Judenstadt because you can't have both you can't and now that this the the Jewish project the Zionist project is stained with the blood of thousands and thousands and thousands and I'm sure people have counts for the last 75 years you really want that on you? You really want to support that kind of wickedness? And it is wickedness. It's evil in the sight of God. He did not give you that land eternally. No, it was given to you on the condition of good behavior. And then he said he'd drive you out if you didn't. And he did that repeatedly. And that was probably was what's going to happen now. The Zionists... The, the, They'll be driven out because they won't live in peace. They want their own way, and they don't care how many people they kill to get it. And people like that can't be allowed to have sovereignty over anyone. They have to be de-established. Not killed, de-established. And I think that's what countries like Iran has been saying. They're talking about eliminating the Zionist entity they're talking about the Jewish Zionist project, not necessarily the Jewish people. That's a, an important distinction. And Jews in the United States, well, it's, it's like so many of them, like Ben Shapiro, he's just uh, a zealot. Now, see, people are taking sides. Are you for what is right and just, or are you for genocide? Ben Shapiro's decided he's for genocide. Of course, the, the lies that have been coming out of the Zionist entity, the project over there, about uh, October 7th is a, this whole false narrative of this murderous rampage by these wicked, you know, godless Arab mobs. No, that's not true at all. That's not true. And the fact, and the fact that uh, it is probably, it's evident that from the from the forensic evidence of the videos, from even a distance, people that simply look at the photos and they can look at, wait a minute, AK-47s don't do that. Attack helicopters and tanks do that. So a very, very large number of the civilians that were killed were killed at the hands of the IDF. That's what the photos show. That's what the aerial video supplied by the state of Israel shows. 
they're really not very good at propaganda, not very good at covering their tracks. Literally, because some of the video shows tank tracks right before the burn houses with shell holes in the walls. Yeah, the idea killed probably most of those civilians and many of their own people, soldiers. They weren't very discriminant. They were in a panic. That's the only thing I'll say. I don't think it was a conspiracy. I think it was a panic. They were overrun by Hamas. The, the, these people that were convinced that they were in the, the invincible David against Goliath, and it turned out, no, the other side was David, and he just took them down. Israel fell that day with a shepherd's stone in their forehead. And now the myth is broken, the myth of Jewish victimhood. They have shattered with their genocide, the myth of Jewish in, in, invinci invincibility because God being their protector is shattered. They have revealed to the world what they really are, sinful people with an attitude, an attitude of victimhood and an attitude of superiority a really, really bad combination that produces acts like genocide. How that will shake out? Well, it, it'll fall apart. The, the Zionist project will end. It has to end. The question is whether the Jewish people decide that they want to live in peace or not. It can end good or it can end bloody. And that's the way it is, just like the American project. It will end either with uh, the United States willfully stepping back and seeking to somehow save itself from its own foolishness and its own impending monetary collapse and because it's made itself rich with lo loans, but I don't think that's what the Bible indicates will happen. I don't think we have leadership in this country that has the wisdom or the moral fiber to do anything like that. You got any empty places, that, empty homes in Russia that needs an occupant? Uh, what's an old man to do? Pray that I don't stay around too long, I guess. Oh, God, deliver us from this mess. Uh, living in Babylon the Great. Uh, well, we know how Babylon the Great ends. The Bible tells us. It tells us. Suddenly, in one hour, destroyed. Such great wealth destroyed. The, the, the merchants of the earth staying at a distance, watching the burning of Babylon, mourning over the fact that their prophets are now gone. Yeah, the Bible tells us how it ends. <sighs> My home isn't here. My home is... And I will go to my Lord one way or the other, and then he will return to fix this mess, this messed up planet, and put it under his authority. And we will have truly good government for a thousand years. And then the next step takes place. It's all in the book. And it's happening now. It's happening now. Exactly what the next stage is? Well, when it starts to shape, take its shape, then I can point to the Scripture and say, that's it right there. 